the, the whole Jay Z bar texting him, bro, it's not over, you know, that's like crazy. Th- that's bro. hard. That's really fire. I I really like this so far. So that was a moment from our first reaction to Nas and Hit Boys King's Disease Three. If you guys want to check out the full live reaction, check out the link in our description. And we're doing this for the biggest albums of the year. Without further ado, we finally have the end of the trilogy to King's Disease, and this has been one of the best runs of the 2020s. Let's get right into it with the artist's performance, bro. How do you feel? Well, listen, man, this is quite an interesting track list just because, you know, Nas is 49 years old. Coming into 2022, it's his fourth decade of dominance, low-key, and it seems like he's not slowing down. And when we were talking about this trilogy and talking about the recent projects that he had released prior to this, let's go back to 2022 with King's Disease 2 and Magic. King's Disease 2 was more meditative. It was more Nas on his reflective vibes, and you got that through different performances. And then you get something like Magic. It's a lot more aggressive it's a lot more darker and competitive in tone and i feel what king's disease 3 does from let's say an art you know an artist standpoint and a performance standpoint is bringing in those two worlds together as far as naz's performance goes and you're gonna find it right away getting into let's say ghetto reporters the way that he starts off that first verse for me was perfect the, the rapping's immaculate and he already sets the tone for what you're gonna find you know into the rest of this track list yeah. for me so at least that's on my end even something let's say thun or michael and quincy that's more more of like Nas on is let's say assassin aggressive sort of vibe where you're getting these vintage performances that you might have found in like the 90s or the early 2000s so how did you like his performance on this album? Oh, I was so balanced just like you were saying and I love the interpolations and also the flows that Nas is paying homage to for example on the intro song Ghetto Reporter he raps the audacity masterfully crafted these classics so naturally which is the same flow that Eminem uses on the way I am when he raps I sit back with this pack of zigzags oh I picked up on that bro I was like that's amazing also on the song get light where he kind of uh, interpolates Biggie's hook to party and bullshit on the outro that was fun it just showed you that Nas is kind of you know telling people that he's, he's also a student of the game. He admires his contemporaries, so that was awesome. But one of his best performances, of course, comes on Thun, where you get that kind of aggressive Escobar shit, where it kind of reminds you of something he would have done on Ether or the whole Stillmatic album. It really had that fast-paced energy. Even a song like 30 was amazing because he's kind of playing around with the speed of his flows, kind of accelerating, slowing back down, and kind of going back and forth with his rhythm, which is untouchable. And... At this point, bro, you have to cherish this moment because he does not sound 49 years old. And I think that, you know, I actually tweeted this out. He's the Deadpool of hip hop, bro. Like, you, can, you cannot kill him. He's immortal. And he's going to keep doing yeah, this for as he, long as he wants I, to. I put out that tweet, too. I'm like, how is, Na- how is Nas rapping like this at 49? And people are like, bro, this is not the NBA. You know, like, he's not going to fucking decline. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, that's but a pretty it's good It's kind point. of a narrative within hip hop that artists can't go on past the age of 40. Absolutely. You know? And Jay Z has even, you know, came out and said that, it, you know, hip hop is more of like a, a young bull's game. And to see Nas still have this hunger, and that's more of what I meant, more of the hunger and yeah. more of the technical sharpness still to his pen was amazing to see. Not only that, but like I was mentioning about King's Disease 2, more of those meditative sort of performances, you're still going to find that within the album as well. Let's say something like Once a Man, Twice a Child, or even Reminisce, you know, when, and I'm going to get more into those songs once I get into the content matter portion of this review, where you see like, not that he slows down his flow, but he wants you to pay more attention to the way that he's crafting his lines within his verses, the way that he wants you to connect more on an emotional level. It kind of feels almost like, okay, instead of him impressing you with his rap verses, it feels like you and I right here in this review talking to each other so that's what i like too is that there were certain instances where i felt like hey man he actually has the power to be able to you know use those dynamic shifts to keep you entertained throughout the whole performance yeah, and, and it's i find it's that fun great. when you're getting that conversational type of naz where he's kind of like guiding the youth and um telling you about the ins and outs of the streets of the music industry it's all impressive but one i would say nitpick that i have with the artist performance comes in the song what the fuck shaking my head where he goes and uses a bunch of acronyms for the first verse and it doesn't really add much to his delivery or to his bars it feels like it's been overused at this point from other rappers alike and The second half of that song is redeemable, though. Absolutely. It's much better. And I think that's why, like, WTF SMH is actually not a skip for me. No. And it's only, like, maybe two, three lines that you're going to find it, especially on the first verse. But like you said, once you get to that second portion of the song, you're going to find something great there. And, guys, for the Hit Boy Artist performance, we're going to tackle that within the production. So don't worry about it. And I want to say, bro, it was an amazing artist performance overall. Like, man, definitely kept up pace with with the other installments of this trilogy. And... 
it just shows how much longevity this man has had. And in I this think genre. that he's also more confident than he's been on any other installment of this trilogy because, first of all, he's taking on 17 songs all on his own. And he carried that track list with ease, bro. Absolutely. And Not was, a single feature was needed. No, it wasn't, bro. He's just flexing his muscles and showing you that, like, he doesn't need a yeah. Lauren Hill feature or an Eminem feature to make a fucking quality album. But let's now go into the content, which, of course, is always very important to look at when you're looking at a Nas album. And when it comes to this one, one of the first highlights that I want to talk about is the song Beef. Absolutely. And this is him <laughs> personifying, going, beef, personifying right, bro. beef, bro. And he's done this before. He he did it on I Gave You Power where he personifies a gun. He did it on Project Roach where he's personifying a roach. Or yeah. even Last Words where he's, perf- where he's personifying a prison cell. Like He's the master of crafting these concept songs where he's literally personifying objects and a bunch of, like he could personify a fucking paperclip and make it interesting. Bro. Yeah, even you know, money is my bitch is another good uh, example of that when he's personifying a woman that you know reflects mm-hmm. as money. So um, I, I love seeing that come back through on this track list, and it was so cool because like there's two verses to it, and it's wrapped into like I, I find like you only realize that he's really personifying a gun once you get to the choruses, which is super cool, and I find that's something that you get also on I Gave You Power as well. Like once you get to the choruses, it's kind of like a whole loop in and then after that he goes into like another thought or memory so it's not just, i gave you power level but it's still it's, phenomenal. no absolutely i gave you power is loki my favorite nas song so yeah. i can't say that yeah. but let me go through this chorus i be trying to find the best way um they can stop me cold another body and guess who the cause and why they foes beef is my name my story is age old some question why do i always come to take souls like that type of writing is what i wanted to see on this album plus there's some highlights as far as like even going back into like previous his beefs that he had notably the one with jay-z where i believe it was on hood to hood you know he's actually laughing about you know the whole ether takeover thing where he was saying no beef or rivals they playing ether on title brothers could do anything when they decide to in a range rover the st- the dissecting bars from takeover sometimes i text hova this ain't over laughing and i love that i love how you know he's taking you back to earlier portions of his career i love that type of flashback i really enjoy and he it. still has that competitive energy which so many modern rappers are lacking so it's cool to kind of see him being playful with that and he's also giving you like multi-syllabic rhyme schemes within that section of the of, of thun which is really impressive apart from that i love the interlude serious interlude where he kind of gives you more of that storytelling nas going through a love triangle and kind of all the issues you know surrounding that um another big one for me um came on the song legit where he's kind of urging people to stop selling weight because of dangers of the DA, of the dea cracking down on you and that's kind of like the role that he's been playing on a lot of these king's disease projects is just being that godfather figure yeah kind of guiding the youth in the streets and in the music industry alike as i said earlier and um it's just it's really impressive to see what he's doing also on a song like first time giving love to kendrick lamar absolutely that was beautiful and i feel like what Nas has done great with this uh, with this trilogy is the fact that he's tackling a lot of the same topics, but from different angles. For example, a song like Moments is similar to First Time because he's kind of reminiscing on like how his fan base must have reacted to the first time they reacted to a crazy Nas lyric or the first time they just heard one of his songs. You kind of get um, intersectionality between and, both and of those. And that's what I find so cool about the content yeah. matter is that Loki feels a lot more like from Nas's lenses as far as like the standpoint that he's going yeah. into. And um, whereas if maybe in past, you know, installments of the trilogy, it's maybe from more of like a worldview where he's kind of like looking and trying to put himself into different perspectives, which I find super cool throughout the track list. Um, yeah, and as you said, on something like last time, um, sorry, first time. Is it first time? First time, like, yeah. First time, my bad. I had my wrote, my notes written down wrong here. Um, Tupac, Biggie, um, also Slick Rick, Dr. Dre, um, having Lil Wayne in there. Like, I love that, you know, that second verse just because it's always nice to see the goats pay homage to each other. And what's cool about this too is that we were talking about the victory laps, but you have Nas getting into like these vintage, like Esco sort of modes where, you know, the multi, the multi-syllabic rhyming is on par, bro. Like all of the lines are interconnecting together. Like it's a, it was a real treat going through genius and reading through this album, just because I find the writing was absolutely immaculate. It was amazing. Another bar I, sh- I shouted out was uh, NASA without the A at the end, take off on three. 
Double entendre there. Obviously, when a space shuttle takes off, count down from three. Also, King's Disease three. That was pretty fire. Um, apart from that, Once a Man, Twice a Child was a beautiful song. Beautiful that song. That one really pierces the soul. He's kind of just rapping about the process of aging and how when we get older, we're kind of reverting back to how we were as babies in terms of needing that dependence and being more fragile. Um, so it's cool to see him be um, so mature in this later stage in his career. So... Overall, I think the content was amazing. Though. Absolutely, Not it was doubt. amazing, and it'll keep you intrigued all the way through. Guys, let me know how you feel about the content in the comment section, but let me keep going with this, all right? So there's obviously no features. We're going to skip over that for today, but let's go into the production because I feel like when it comes to that modern, you know, let's say rapper-producer duo, there's no one doing it like Nas and Hitboy at the moment, man. They have been flawless, dude. Like, well, King's Disease 1, obviously, I have my gripes with it, and then after that, KD2. It's a quality album. Yeah, it's a quality man. album, but I still don't think it's on par with KD2 or Magic, but this... This, this was fantastic from Hitboy's standpoint. This is the best produced album of the whole trilogy. It's super dynamic. And bro, I want to start off with the fucking sample choices on this album. Amazing. It's it's one of the best. It's one of the best like sampled albums of the year, no doubt. So let's start off with beef. This actually samples Fight Time by Donald Byrd, and this is the sample that was used in New York State of Mind. And what's cool about that is like throughout the album, and I'm gonna, you know, kind of connect this thought to this one. You're going to find that a lot of the productions do match Nas's energy, and that gives you that vintage Esco sort of vibe. And I find they did this perfectly for beef because when you get Nas, let's say, you know, personifying something or going back to an old, you know, song concept and putting it into a modern twist, you still want to have that vintage vibe to it. So for them to choose that sample again but use it in a new way, I found was absolutely yeah, genius. That's what I think is so brilliant about what Hip Boy does here. And by the way, I think it is the best produced hip hop album of the year. And what he does so brilliantly here is that he's kind of bridging the gap between vintage aesthetics and more of a new sound. And I think that's what's amazing is that Hip Boy is literally giving beats for the entire family to enjoy. You know what I mean? Like exactly. on a song like Reminisce, for example, we go from these boom bap drums and this beautiful Mary J. Blige sample to a fucking drill section at the end. Like the progression of the beats are super well timed and calculated. I also think that when you're looking at the sample selection, like you said, on a song like Legit, the live crowd setting and sample from the Dells where you have um, the main singer singing love and extending that note for so long and that being kind of the backdrop for the melody of the song, that was brilliant. The spiraling piano keys on that track as well, so elegant. And I just think that Hip Boy is, as, is amazing at kind of like I said, bridging the gap between the old and the new and giving something for all hip hop fans to enjoy. And that's something that, you know, Nas actually says on this album is that he wants to cater to the 16 year old fans, but also the 60 year old fans. Absolutely. And Hit Boy helps him accomplish yeah, for that. For sure. And I, and I think it's such a hard task to be able to cater a soundscape to Nas because thinking about this too, I mean, Nas is a very complicated writer. I mean, like things could get flown over your head and sometimes the production could take away from the writing, right? Like, let's say if it's too triumphant or let's say if it's too in your face, if it's too brash. But with this, like, it was still very luxurious and it was still very lush while still keeping that simplicity that Nas needed to be able to glide through this album. And I really appreciated that because nothing really felt overbearing to me. And even going back to, I want to keep referencing Thun and Michael and Quincy because, again, two of my favorite tracks off of this album Album, bro, you feel like you're in an it was written sort of like soundscape. Your textual vibes. Bro, like it's fucking, it's mesmerizing, bro. Like these are the types of beats that Nas needs to be able to ride. And I think he did a fantastic job and on that. And that whole well. narrative that, you know, Nas doesn't have great beat selection, that's dead, bro. You no. can't even fucking bring I don't even that know up. Where that kind of stems from. He referenced it himself, though, on this album. Um, but how'd you feel about the more experimental beats, bro? That's a question I have for you. So, for example, What the Fuck Shaking My Head had a very abstract vocal sample and also Don't Shoot had kind of this Western electric guitar chords yeah. involved, more of a rock feel. So how did you feel about those more experimental I ones? liked it because I also wanted to see Nas sort of challenge himself mm -hmm. into certain areas. And I mean, it won't tell me anything more about Nas's career, you know, deciding on like, okay, if he's challenging himself or whatever it is, he's done everything. But just to see like him being able to tackle these types of different productions while being able to still make it feel like home as far as like a concise track list was really nice for me. And as you said, like those types of abstract vocal samples were appreciated on my part, even something like Hood to Hood example, where you kind of feel like you're in a Miami Vice sort of theme. And you also know, kind West of, Coast vibes yeah, though. Yeah, and like what was nice about that too is that Nas's rapping was also also a bit more slowed down in comparison to the first three tracks that you'd gotten before that or four tracks I think it was four tracks before that yeah um, and that's what I like too is that there's all kinds of these different like 
shifts in pace as far as the production goes throughout the album and i feel like that kept me entertained as well and it definitely was not stagnant on my end absolutely bro and i also love the song get light that sounded like it was taken straight from illmatic it was a new york anthem love the trumpets there and i think overall um hit boy gave us a master class of sampling of drum programming and he really had so much chemistry with him because he knew exactly which beats would be able, you know, to provide Nas a soundscape for him to murder. That's Absolutely. what he gave us. No, it was. It was well executed. I think the production was amazing, guys. You're perfect. We were kind of debating about this back and forth. I think if someone were to say perfect for this, I would agree. So it's it's in that middle point. It's in that middle point. It's definitely one of the best produced rap albums of the Not year. Not really any flaws, bro. <laughs> so shout out to Hit Boy, but let's keep going on with this. Let me go on to the replay value. Um, The replay value on all of these Nas albums, as far as the 2020 decade goes, has been great. And what's cool about this is like, there's not a single skip, bro. There's not a single, let's say, song where, like, let's say on the previous, you know, albums like EMPD where I'm kind of like, okay, I don't really got to go back to that all that much, let's say, in my, my listenings. But for this, you want to give it a complete listen because it's literally 17 tracks of pure fire, including the bonus track. And um, even at that, you're getting some of the best songs of the year, like Beef, like Thun, like Michael and Quincy, arguably the best installment of the King's Z series, in my opinion. I don't know yet. Like, for me... Arguably, that's why I said arguably. I said arguably yeah. i'm like you could definitely make that argument yeah. at the moment and it's one of the best written and produced albums of 2022 so far i'm very happy with this draw in terms of replay value for me it's gonna be one of my most played you know for the rest of the year without a doubt and like i said bro like 17 songs all on your own that's an impressive feat and it does meet that no skip policy there's not it a does. single one i mean it like does. i said there's portions of tracks like what the fuck shaking my head that i'm not big on um same thing for Actually, no. There's not really any other portion no, of songs that I don't fuck no, with. Um, I'll give you my top five songs. Well, number one is probably going to have to be Thun. Number two is going to have to be Get Light. Number three, I'm going to go with um, probably Reminisce. Number four, give me Legit. And then I have Michael and Quincy. That's okay, five. so uh, I'll you? give you my top three. I'm going to go number one, Beef. I'm going to go number two, Thun. And then after number three, I'm going to go Michael and Quincy. Those are my top three off the album. And I also want to say this about the replay value. Guys, appreciate this album because, you know, to see a legend, you know, come into the genre once again, you know, four decades into his career and still deliver an album of the year contender is extremely rare. It's a fucking blessing. And I think we should be super appreciative this of what is, we got This today, is the best know? run of the 2020s for many rappers. Oh, bro, it's up there. It's for sure up there in contention. Who, no, who has a better run in this decade? Oh, I, I have to just see the way, like, you know, things progress. But I think for the moment, for it now, is, for, for the moment, it's, yes. it's not debatable to me. But for, let's get into our overall thoughts. I think that um, you know, Nas and Hip Boy had nothing to prove going into this album. Uh, of course, obviously, with this run and everything else he's done in previous decades, the legacy is already established. But what he did here is he further elongated that gap between himself and the next best rapper, which is an impressive feat. I think that the chemistry between Hip Boy and Nas again is masterful because they're bridging the gap between what the old school. The, with, with, between what the old heads would love and also the newer listeners which is really impressive um he's changing up his flows constantly he's experimenting with different rhyme styles different song concepts he's as meditative as you want him to be and he's really kind of um the epitome and the poster boy for what it means to age gracefully in hip-hop and like i said this is just a perfect I would say finale to one of the best trilogies in hip hop history. In hip hop history, that's a very, very bold take. I don't know if I'd go that far off the bat. I'm not sure. I'd have to have a conversation about it and go go further into my research. But as like I said, for the 2020 decade, you know, this is this is top tier, man. You're not gonna find anything better as far as the trilogy trilogy goes. And as you said, this was the perfect way to wrap it all up. And even in my opinion, like just seeing Nas do this and being a fan of his career for so many years was a moment for me as a fan like fuck even making content on this like i just really enjoy this album bro, yeah. from a listener standpoint and um, i'm gonna have so much fun with this i'm gonna be bumping it the rest of the year it's gonna be my rotation next year probably the year after and after and after because this is fucking timeless you know like it when is. you get nas albums and you get it produced to this type of t i mean fuck man like it, it's it's a hip-hop's paradise, bro. Like, you know, like that's really what I could say about there's, this album. There's literally songs on here that you could slap onto the track list of It Was Written or Stillmatic and Nas, Nas's voice and just track presence is on par. Like, he doesn't sound aged whatsoever and it just shows that he is maybe the most immortal MC 
that we've ever had grace hip hop. Absolutely. So I think it's time to give Nas his flowers for this album. Definitely a fantastic listen. Overall rating is going to be amazing for King's Disease 3. Yes, sir. Guys, let me know in the comments section how do you feel about the album. Let us know where we got it right. Let us know where we fucked up. And as Lou said at the beginning of this episode, we did do a full live album reaction to King's Disease 3. If you guys want to check it out, guys, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this review, and we'll catch you on the next one.